Hey guys, how's it going? It's John from The Machine Shop. Today I'm going to show you a getting started with the Raspberry Pi Pico, the new microcontroller board from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So we're going to have a look at getting our software installed on our computer, getting MicroPython installed on the actual Pi Pico, and then we're going to run through how we actually write up some code in MicroPython and download it onto the board, see if we can get an LED to flash or something like that. You ready? Then let's go! Oakley doakley, so first of all we're going to need some software. So let's head over to our PC and let's fire up our favorite internet browser. So the software that I'm going to use for this is called PyCharm, okay? Now PyCharm is a really good integrated development environment for Python and it also works with MicroPython and there's actually a plugin for MicroPython for PyCharm to allow us to download straight onto the board. So let's grab that. So Google PyCharm, go to the downloads for the page so pick what operating system you're running. I'm running Windows at the moment. There's also Mac and Linux versions of this. Um, if you want to pay for it, go for it. Go for the professional version. If you want the free version, then go for the community one. So that's the one we're going to go for. Grant, and then that will start downloading. Now we're going to need another piece of software, and that is MicroPython for the actual Pi Pico. So let's go and grab that quick. So raspberrypi.org. Okay, now I'm going to go to hardware. I'm going to scroll down to the Raspberry Pi Pico and then if you see this little thing here that says get start, get started. Mm -hmm. Click on that. Okay, and then scroll down. Uh, now we want getting started with MicroPython. You can also use C and, and C++. Uh, I might have a look at that in a future video, but um, I'm going to go with MicroPython today. So click on that. And then you've got basically some little instructions of what we're going to do. I'll take you through it anyway. So we're going to download this UF2 file. Okay, there's a little file there that we just downloaded, and it looks like our PyCharm is downloaded as well. So let's uh, let's open up our PyCharm installer. Okay, so here is our installer. So just run through this like you would with any other type of installing of software. Um, it should be fairly quick. It'll all depend on the speed of your computer. Great. So there's our install finish, and we can run PyCharm Community Edition. So click on that and click Finish, and that should open up PyCharm. Now it may ask you uh, that you need to install or update your current version of Python if you haven't already got it. It will run through that. It may pop up in your taskbar down the bottom. Um, just look out for that. There may be a little flashing icon. Mine did when it went to install it the first time. Um, so look out for that and then you can install um, Python. Right. So uh, first thing I'm going to do in PyCharm is I'm just going to go mm -hmm. to the plugins bit on this bit here. Click on there. Now I want to install the, the MicroPython plugin. So MicroPython. There we are, MicroPython, and click install. Done. That was easy. Okay, so that's um, pretty much everything that we need for PyCharm for now. We'll come back to that. Let's get yeah. MicroPython installed onto our Pi. So, so here is the Raspberry Pi Pico. We've got what we're concentrating on here. We've got the USB port and this button here, this boot cell. So what we need to do, take your micro USB cable, uh, make sure that obviously it is a micro USB cable that's capable of doing data and power. So what we're going to do is press down on the boot select button and then plug in our cable and then let go. Okay, now on your PC you should have had, uh, if, especially if you're running Windows, um, a folder open. That is actually the boot drive that's on the um, Pi Pico. Now what we need to do here is if we go to our downloads folder we can grab that uh, Pico Python, that UF2 file, it seems like I've downloaded it a million times here and I'm going to drag that simply onto the drive. Now what it's going to do is automatically reboot the Pi Pico, that's it, it's installed, that's now running MicroPython. Easy peasy, right? Okay. Let's go back to PyCharm. So we've installed MicroPython plugin on here. We need to make a new project. Let's do that. Uh, right, so what we're going to call this? Let's call this um, Pi Pico Blink. Okay, so I'm going to, up here, I've got a name of my file, Pi Pico Blink. Pi Pico Blink, yeah. Uh, everything else we can leave as the same. So we click Create. Okay, and now PyCharm's going to go off and just set up all of its stuff, ready for us to do our programming. Little tip of the day there, if you want to have a read of that, and you can go through all the tips. I'm just going to close that for now. It's going to let me. There we go. 
Okay, so this is PyCharm. Okay, so we've got our code area in the middle and you'd have all tabs along the top here with all the different files that you might have. Uh, you've got your project folder here with all the files that you have in your project. Uh, there's a button up here which is play or debug. Um, that's basically all you need to know, especially for getting the uh, PyPika up and running. So there's a couple of little settings that we need to do. So if you go into file and mm -hmm. settings, if you're running on Mac, then it would be PyCharm preferences. So just so you know that is. Okay, so now uh, down here we've got languages and frameworks. Click on that and then click on MicroPython. Okay, so we need to enable the MicroPython support. That basically just allows that uh, MicroPython to work on that project that we're working on. Device type, we want the Pi board. Okay, it hasn't been updated yet to show the Pico Pi, but the Pi board is basically the same. So let's go with that. Now, device path. Um, this is mm -hmm. where you need to find out basically what the COM port is of your Pi Pico. On Windows, it will be COM and then a number. On Mac, it will be, um, you have to go and find it, it will be in the dev folder. Um, if you want me to do something specific on that, then let me know in the comments and I'll do it like a Mac specific and a Linux specific version. Uh, here we're in Windows, so we need to find out what the device path is. Now, what we can do is if we right click on start down here and go to device manager. That was right click on start, go to device manager. Okay, here's the device manager for my PC. Now mm -hmm. under COM ports here, I can see that I have three devices here. I've got two Bluetooth links and one serial device. That's probably my Pi. Uh, I can actually check this if I unplug my cable from my Pi, like so. That should refresh. There we are, that COM port has disappeared. Now plug it back in. Yeah, bingo. So COM17 is what I need to go for. So I can close that. Mm -hmm. And in here, I just type in COM17. There is a detect button. It doesn't really work yet. Um, it probably does. It depends on the board, I think, the specifics. So when they update it for the Pi Pico, then I can imagine that the tech thing will work. For now, do it that way inside the device manager. Okay, click apply mm -hmm. down the bottom. Great, and then just click OK. Grant, okay. Now, um, we will get a notification up here that says that some packages are required. So here it says missing required packages. So click on that blue link there, and you can see down the bottom, it'll start doing some things and then eventually it will say that it's installed everything. There we go, packages successfully installed. Grant. Now, what we can do is delete all this code because we don't need any of this because we're going to start fresh and I'll show you how to do that. There's one more thing we need to do. On here, normally when you want to flash all your code onto the Pi Pico, you right click mm -hmm. on main.py and then down here, see where it says run? That's supposed to say run flash a main Pi, okay, but it doesn't at the moment. Now what we need to do is we need to go to this area here. So it says more run defug, modify the run configuration. Okay, click on that. And now it's put in this flash main.py. That's all you need to do. Click apply and click OK. Believe me, that took me ages to figure out how to get that to do that. Um, but now we should have they are run flash main pi. So that's what we need. That's what we're going to click on to be able to do our download to our board. So let's put a bit of code into here. So what we can do is we can start off with, uh, I'm going to go with from machine. So machine is a library of all of the bits that are on the Pico Pi. Um, import uh, pin with capital P. Okay, that's it for that. So that is basically going to get our library of all of the configuration bits for the Pi Pico. Okay, so what I need to do now is I'm going to set up a pin as an output. So I'm going to say LED equals, um, and then it's pin with a capital P, open brackets. I need to say what pin it is. Now the onboard LED on the Pi Pico is connected to pin 25. So pin 25. And then if you guys have ever done anything with Arduino, you probably know that you have to specify what the pin is and then what direction it is. So in here we do capital P, I N, so for pin, dot, and then out. As capital letters okay so that's set up pin 25 as an output and we've assigned all that to the name LED cool easy peasy okay so now what I want to do is um, what I want to do is I want to make an LED flash now to make an LED flash I need some sort of delay so I'm also going to import the time library okay so I've got that in there as well okay so we've got our LED set up I'm gonna set up a while loop so while true 
which basically means we're going to set up a loop which is going to indefinitely run uh, with a colon at the end. In Python, everything's indented to say, like, uh, this runs inside this loop, you indent it all. So here now I can just do LED1, which means turn it on. I can do time.sleep in seconds, so I just want one second. And I can do LED0, which turns it off. And then I do another sleep. Time.sleep, oh, with rounded brackets, uh, one second. So what that should do is turn it on for one second and then turn it off for one second, okay? That all looks good. So I'm gonna right click mm. on my main.py and go to run flash main pi. Mm. Now what that should do is it'll say connecting to COM17, that COM port, uploading the files. Yeah, it's done that and it's done a soft reboot, okay? So now what we can see on our Pi is we've now got a nice flashing LED. Look at that, there we go. It's coming on for one second and it's going off for one second. Perfect. Now I'm gonna show you one other thing is um, on the Pi Pico in Python, it's dead easy to do any um, like serial messages, like messages from the Pi back to your computer. And I'm gonna show you where you can see those messages. So all I've got to do for this, let's say for example in here, I want a message to come back to tell me whether or not the LED is on. So here I've just got to write print and then in brackets with quotes, oh, with quotes, there we go, um, I can put in my message. So I'm going to do LED on and that's it, right? So now here underneath this, print and then again in my uh, quotes, LED off, okay? And those are the two messages. Mm. Let's send that over to the board. So again, run flash main pi. And yeah, grand, that's running. Now to find out where those messages are going, if you go to tools at the mm -hmm. top of PyCharm, go down to MicroPython, and then there's a message here that says MicroPython REPL. So click on that. Mm. Okay, so what that's doing is this is basically like the command prompt for the Pi Pico. Now there's a couple of commands we can do. If we do control and then a closed square bracket, that takes us out of our command prompt and it just quits. If we do control C, it cancels the program it's currently running. And if we do control C, it resets the whole thing. So um, what it's done is we've gone into the terminal type um, command prompt thing. So it stopped the program that was running. So my LED is no longer flashing on my board. So if I do control D on my keyboard, Mm -hmm. What we can see now are those messages coming back. This is from the Pi Pico coming back into our software. Now that's mm -hmm. really handy if you guys need to do any debugging of your software, then you can easily put in, you know, uh, am I at this stage? Did this if statement work? Has my LED come on? Right? That sort of thing. You can also quite easily get it to do values as well. So let's say, for example, mm -hmm. we have, uh, we're going to set up a value here and we're going to set it to zero to start with. Okay, so we've got our value set up there. Now what I want to do is print that value to here. So here if I put in uh, value colon, uh, let's not bother with the space, but then I'm going to put two curly brackets like that and I'll do dot format, open brackets, and then I can put in what it was. So that was value. So what that's going to do is it'll format it to the correct thing to put it in there. It knows it's an integer, so it's going to put that in there. And then after that, I'm going to say value equals value plus one. Okay, mm -hmm. so now if I right click and I send that over to my board. Okay, now I've got this error message here. Fail to access COM17. That's because I've still got that terminal open. So if I open up that and I click on the X above it, it'll say, do you want to terminate the process terminal local? Yes, I do. Okay, so that's how you get rid of that error message. So if I right click, flash main again, that'll flash my Pi Pico. So I'll go to tools and run the REPL again. Okay, and then if I do Control D, there we go. We can see it's still got that print statement for LED off, but you can see that value is incrementing by one every time it goes through there. So you can send strings and you can send numbers, perfect for doing any debugging. Cool, so thanks for joining me guys. That's a quick look and getting started with how to use the new Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller board. Thank you for watching. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Machine Shop UK. Also visit the website, themachineshop.uk, where you can find our new online store and links to all of our other videos and other bits and pieces that we've got on there. Cool. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.